Hey everyone, Paul Kepner here. Welcome back. So, you've got one of these Bell and Howell lenses. Let me guess. Kids in the neighborhood are making fun of you because it's not converted to a single focus or to a useful single focus. Well, I can help you with that. I can show you exactly what tools you need and accessories to convert this in to a useful single focus lens that everyone in the neighborhood is going to be envious of. Let me show you a list of items that you'll need. One Bell & Howell 2 times anamorphic lens, one lens spanner wrench, one 58mm to 77mm step-up ring, one M58 to M58 17 to 31mm helicoid, one 58mm adapter collar, one 16th inch Allen wrench, and a small shuffle. Okay, on the list, I forgot to tell you, you'll need a small flat bladed screwdriver for these right here, these two screws. So let me show you what all you need to do to convert this now. And all the links for everything I will leave in the description along with the person that I get the adapter for, or get the adapter made from. That way you can get your lens converted. So let's get started. So first, these two Phillips screws right here, you want to loosen those. So they're very short flange. So you want to use a real fine tip blade and you want to run it in there just to make sure there's not any dust or dirt. Push down. And then it will unscrew. In fact, I have this little tray right here. We'll put this screw in there. See how tiny it is? Little. It's right there. So don't lose it. See how tiny it is? And the next side, same thing. You want to run it through there. Make sure there's not any junk or anything in the screw. Sometimes it's a, a little stuck. There we go. Second thing you want to do, you want to unscrew this piece right here. This is where all of your lenses are that you'll need. And this takes a while. There you go. This piece you don't need to do anything with. If it's dirty, you can clean it off and then re-grease it. But I would just leave it as is because you're not going to be doing anything with these threads. So and that's what the inside looks like. Oh, so you're asking what the shovel's for. Sometimes projects like this, when you're modifying them, whether it's a lens or a camera or whatever, they just don't go quite as planned. As a backup, I always put them in the backyard, bury them, and forget about them, and never speak of them again. So, got this piece. We're going to leave this alone for right now. I'm going to leave this right here. And yes, I'm using a towel because everything's round and it wants to roll off if I use a hard surface. Take your lens wrench and you have a slotted groove right here and one right here so what you want to do is use the slotted end of the wrench and adjust it to where Let's see if I can do this to where you can see it see how it's on there just like that Tighten your wrench down. You don't want to move. Now, instead of turning the wrench, I always suggest turning the housing or the lens or whatever you're using or whatever you're trying to open. That way you have a little bit more control over it. So, let's see if I can do this so you can see. Oh, for the record, you'll see dust and dirt on this lens. I haven't taken this apart yet to clean it. This is my second one. My first one I, I use 
uh, is spotless. But this one eventually I'll be I'll be taking it all apart, putting it back to the way it was when you originally saw it, and going through it and cleaning it. So don't stress; it'll be taken care of. I just haven't done it for this video. There you go. Now it's loose. Take this right there. And this optic is this front optic is what you want. So you can just turn it upside down, give a little push on the back, and it pops out. So that's all this piece you don't need anymore. You can put this back in here and just store it away for if you ever decide to put it back to factory. So we'll put this out of the way. So now you have this optic right here. And the way it works is it fits here and it moves in and out. So now the next piece in the parts list, I forgot to show you this piece. <laughs> it's kind of an important piece. It holds the optic, so yeah, you're gonna need that. And again, I'll leave a description for it and where to get it in the video description. So, so this piece has, you have a 16th, this is a 1 16th Allen key. So you have a screw there, one there, and one there. So you have three Allen, so you have three Allen screws. So you want to loosen them just a little bit. Now this optic, you have a flat side right here. See if you can see it. And this other side is a little concave. See if you can see it. So you want the flat side facing up. And so if you look, it won't fit in this way. What this is, is this is more of a pressure fit. So you put your optic in. It goes in here. And then you'll just barely press on the sides, on equal sides. Do it on the other. And now your optic is in there, nice and flat. So if you wanted to very carefully, you can tighten these little set screws just a little extra. I do finger tight, because otherwise you might you take a chance of breaking the, the lens, but you can feel it when it stops. Like right there, it just stopped. Same thing here. And here, you, you definitely don't want to torque on it. Just finger tight, if you do it. Now I've been using it this way for over a year, and it's never messed up. The optic hasn't dropped out. But again, I have not cranked on it, so be very, very careful. So now this piece is ready to go. You're all set, simple enough. Now you've got this. How are you gonna attach them? That's where this piece comes in, right here. If you look, it's threaded on the inside right here, smooth on the outside, and then again, you've got little set screws. What you don't wanna do, this fits over here, just like this, but you don't wanna put that on yet. So how are you gonna attach these to there. Well, this helicoid comes in handy now. So again, you have a 58 millimeter thread here, a male thread, 58 millimeter female thread here. So this is a 58 millimeter. So what you do with this piece is you simply screw it onto here, go backwards until you feel it catch or you hear a click. There you go. And then you just screw it on. It's very simple. Tighten it down. There you go. Now you have a focusing helicoid. Except now you take this ring. And again, 58 millimeter, 58 millimeter. Go backwards until you hear a click. There you go. 
and then you can go forward. And just give it a little snug tight. See, so now there's your focusing mechanism. Right there. So now, again, you have uh, three 1 16th Allen screws or grub screws, if you want to call them, right here. So what you want to do is you want to go as far in. You want to keep this. You don't want to do it with it out like that because then this will go too far and then when you try to focus it, it'll jam it. So you want to completely contract it just like that. And then this just simply slips on here just like that. And it, if you notice, you want to go as far as you can. It almost seems like it's sitting on top of the optic, but it's not. It's actually sitting on this little lip right here. So you don't have to worry. A little lip inside there is sitting right here. So go all the way down, completely flush. So it won't go anymore. And then tighten these. Just snug. They don't need it doesn't need to be cranked down. These are small screws anyway, so. So now this thing won't come off. So now you have a quick single focus solution for your bell and howl. Now this helicoid has some plastic in it, so that's why if you hear it scratching, it's a little scratchy. Um, I got this one, it was I think 20 bucks on uh, eBay because I wanted to test it and it works. So there are brass ones, helicoids that are much quiet. I mean, as quiet as a lens, uh, you're going to be end up paying about 40, 50 bucks for that. Personally, for me, I haven't had a problem with this because I've been recording um, audio separately. So I don't pick up any of this when I'm doing rack focusing. But, and then on the front here, the front thread on this is a 58 millimeter um, standard size for a lot of lenses for especially for cinema use have 77 millimeter threads so I got this 58 to 77 step up ring there you go you're all set you're ready to go now these threads on the back are what's called Series 7. Uh, if you look online, you would want, if you need adapters to go to different size lenses, you would want a Series 7 to whatever size thread you're going to be using. So if your lens is a 58 millimeter, you'd want a Series 7 to 58 millimeter or Series 7 to 55 or whatever you do. Uh, on mine, I have a Series 7 to 58 millimeter. But I do not attach it to lenses because I use a different clamp that I that I made for this. Um, in fact, let me grab it and I'll show you what the clamp is. So I'll give you an idea of what you could do with it. So this is my prototype clamp that I designed. Um, I took a regular uh, 15 millimeter lens brace right here. You can see the back of it. So now this is adjustable and I took the top off then I got this this is a uh, shaft collar for some big machine this is a 50 millimeter so it's a 50 millimeter shaft collar I drilled it put two screws in it and screwed straight into here and so now for the lens this fits right here very nice just like that and then this piece fits on top. These screws are in here. These are 7 32nd screws. I'm trying to do this without seeing it. 
Again, you don't want to crank on this. Um, you want it snug because this this collar will break your lens if you just crank down on it. It's made for big industrial machines. So I'm going to give it a little, little snug. And that's it right there. That's all you want. But now you have a complete setup. You can put this on rails just like this. And say you have your camera here with your taking lens. Let's see. I'll use this as an example. So now here's your camera with your taking lens. This is on rails. Slides up to it. And you focus with the front. And then when you want to change your taking lens, you slide it off on the rails, change your lens, and slide it back in. So, um, yeah, I really enjoy using this lens. This is, uh, it's nice to have. The only downside is it doesn't go really wide. On Super 16, so your the original Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, the Micro Cinema Camera, which I'm filming this on, and uh, any other camera that shoots in Super 16, the widest you'd be able to go on this lens with this setup is 35 millimeter. So take that into consideration. However, you can shoot longer. I've shot this with an 80 millimeter and 100 millimeter. And you don't get any distortions like you do with regular single focus setups, surprisingly. Uh, some of them are only designed for up to 50, and if you start going past it, you get really weird images, but not on this one for some reason. Um, I've toyed around with the idea of getting a larger helicoid and larger diopters for here, but I haven't been able to find the larger diopters. I found a 65 millimeter helicoid. This one is a fifth, yeah, 58, sorry. This one's a 58. I found a 65. I'd like to find something larger, but then finding the optics to fit in it. So, um, in case you're wondering, let me take this off because this is. And this setup with this uh, clamp is very rigid. I don't get any flex out of it. Very nice to shoot with. I love it. So if you were wondering, if you ever are out searching, the diopter here and the one that's on the lens body itself, this one is a plus nine and the one that's in the body is a minus nine. So I had them taken to an optometrist and they put it on their machine and tested them and that's what they ended up being. So I'm going to take this apart. I'll show you. There you go. Comes right apart. Now the there are little tiny set screws here. There's one here, one here. Anyway, you can loosen those and this front piece will unscrew and move in and out. So if there is dirt or something on the inside, you can loosen those and this will come apart. And again, this is it. This ring right here, you want one of these. Uh, if, you, if you find these, if find, look for one of these. Uh, this is what you would use for the Series 7 and the adapters. I'm not sure what size thread this is. May have to make some of these adapters if we can't find them. And so yeah, there you go. Pretty simple. Just go carefully, follow the steps, and um, you'll have a real nice lens that you'll be able to use for a really long time on a lot of projects. Uh, if you break your optics or you strip out the pieces or whatever, just remember the shovel. Anyway, this is Paul Kepner with Kepcraft Media Productions. Hope you found this useful. 
If you want to see more videos like this, be sure and hit the subscribe button below, click on the bell, and then you will be notified on all new ones. Until then, thanks for watching.